How's it going? Today we're going to talk about Bizarre Churches, and here is Bizarre Church number one. 24-hour Church of Elvis. It started in Portland, Oregon in the 1980s by a Stephanie Stevie G. Pierce. That's her nickname, Stevie, so I'm going to refer to her as that throughout the video. Um, it starts out as an exhibit um, in a museum. It's kind of like an art gallery, and there's weird stuff in there. You can see the pictures online, some videos from the past. Uh, news reporters had done some specials. Jay Leno was even there. And you walk in, it's a very small building, they got Elvis memorabilia everywhere. Um, you put some coins in, some different things happen, some songs are sung. But it has a little bit of a dark turn to it. Actually, it's quite a bit of a dark turn. So, after a long time of its existence, as maybe things were fading out and business was dying off or whatever the case is, Stevie says... A lot of people have that mistaken impression that the Church of Elvis is about Elvis. He's just a handy icon. Well, that sounds innocent enough, but you're calling it a church. And if you go back in history, you can see some things here that are kind of disturbing, as I said before. So you can put a coin in, and when you do that, you can hear a sermon from Elvis, whatever that sounds like, we're not told. You can confess your sins to Elvis, that's weird. Um, couples can get legally married here as well. Now, earlier she had said this. She pulls up this little device. It's, it's just a piece of paper, and it's got a picture of Elvis. She calls it a sacred Elvis detector. And it tells you whether the king is in or out, she says. You hold it up in any place where you feel possibly the spirit of Elvis may be. Interesting. That right there is... Is, is really occult, you know. Um, she makes a statement. She says, how were saints born back in the old days? And how did people actually become saints? I think Elvis is eligible to become a saint, right? And what would that be based on? We're not told. But it, it's continuing to get weirder. Now, it has a psychic turn to it as well. So for 25 cents, you can get a past life regression, whatever that is. I need to figure out that um, psychic counseling or a horoscope reading this is this is not the things of the Bible it's not the things becoming of any church okay so there's a paid Elvis impersonator who plays really cheesy Elvis music he's got like some kind of rubber guitar he doesn't look like Elvis uh, he's some kind of a researcher he's just he wears these glasses he just didn't look like anything that he should look like to be an Elvis impersonator but he's there and um, supposedly that helps the act all right so here's a couple the McSwansons and they get married here and in this video they make this statement that's kind of bizarre this is our church we are members of the congregation of the 24-hour church of Elvis it's only appropriate that we would be getting married here. And they go on, she says, I think a marriage here at the Elvis Church is sanctioned by a higher being, and most importantly, Elvis. Think about that. Not only is it strange enough that it might be from a higher being, but that it's even higher than that higher being, it's Elvis. That's the most important part of this. Okay, so a little bit about the marriage ceremony. An Elvis impersonator comes out and blesses the marriage. It's very public. It's on the side of the street. And by the way, you get a legal marriage here or for less money, you can do just like a, a mock-up marriage, you know, and get a fake certificate. But you can get legally married here and those people were. So the Elvis impersonator comes out and he blesses the marriage. Then this computer in this really unsettling voice asks them to recite their vows through a series of questions and follows up finally with do you believe in Elvis? As if that's got something to do with being married. Um, they exchange the rings. And this is all in public. And then a what I'm calling a drag evangelist, Paula, says a few words about the generalized love of God to the amusement of the crowd. Right? Um, it seems funny that in our day, everybody loves God and God loves everybody so long as everybody gets to make God in their own image. Right? So Stevie follows up and she, she says something in one of the videos. She says something very telling. Elvis is everywhere. Instead of being mad at it, I think we should worship him. 
That's why I started this church. So that's Bizarre Church number one, the 24-hour Church of Elvis. And um, it's, it's not at all Christian. We're not told about a Bible or praying to Jesus, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit. There's no Trinity there. You know, we're not even told about the doctrines or anything like that. And I just want to say that to call it a church is very misleading because a church has to do with ecclesiology. It's, it's got to do with um, the entity that God created. What is a church? A church is the people that trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation. Those people are filled with the Spirit of God, and they collectively are the temple of God. Instead of God's temple being a building like it was in the Old Testament, the ultimate goal of God was that He would dwell with His people in us. And so, in this situation, it's very misleading to call this a church, because she's referring really to the building like some kind of a sanctuary. Uh, the church is always the people of God in Christ, right? No matter what church you go to, if you're a saved Christian, you are part of the church. But then there's also local congregations as distinct from the overall universal church, right? So that's a different meaning of the word church. But um, when it comes to the building, sometimes buildings are referred to as churches, and that's less the case, you know, especially in the Bible. Um, but you definitely could technically call a building a church and say, what church do you go to? Meaning, what building do you show up at? But I think more people should be thinking in terms of what group of Christians do you locally assemble with to worship God in Jesus? And that's, that's the meaning of church. So for her to call it a church is very misleading, number one. And then two, the absence of the Bible, the absence of official doctrines about God in the Bible is definitely showing us that it's, it's not a church at all, not, not of God. But it's got spiritual practices there, and it's very New Agey. And I wanted to read you a comment about New Age things. Um, and this is a this is a college book I had about, you know, invitation to world religions. It's not even a Christian book, but they've got a definition here about uh, New Age. I think it's an an important one. Um, New Age religions practices they include things that are not limited to, but channeling disembodied spirits. Um, the use of crystals, magnets for healing purposes, and the reliance on astrological calculations to determine one's fate and fortune. Uh, all of these practices are commonly viewed uh, by secularists as culturally obsolete and empirically invalid efforts of controlling the natural environment. But the New Age advocates argue, in opposition, that science has neglected or suppressed ancient teachings about the human body or the physical universe that cannot be reconciled to any current model of truth. Interesting and long definition, but um, what the New Age movement, if there is even a definition, and by the way, um, I've got really good books on uh, Hidden Worldviews is a really good book. I'll, I'll bring that out here. You can see it right here. But it talks about the fact that the New Age movement is not a movement that even can define itself. It's basically a rejection of traditional religion in favor of spiritual matters, but they go in every single direction, right? And so as weird as the Church of Elvis is, it's kind of not weird at all, because if you're going in any direction, it was only a matter of time before somebody dug this up and came up with this idea. But what's most troubling about the movement is it's a movement that's seeking for God. It's seeking for the things that only God can do. We were made to worship God. We were made to be in relationship with God in truth as God exists. And so to try to find God in any other place other than going to God through Jesus, which is the way back to God, you know, God, um, God's made one way back to himself through Jesus. And it sounds very narrow, but it's really a graceful act of God that he would let us come back to him at all in the state of sin that we're in, because that means we go our way. We do things the way we think it should be done. We don't consider God in the equation. We start out putting ourselves on the throne. And so when we come to Jesus, we're saying, I'm giving up lordship of my life. I'm putting it in your hands, Jesus, because I'm not capable of doing it, number one. And two, 
it dishonors you that I would try to be God, right? So we, we put the, uh, the onus of life back on him, and he, he is the, the driver now, driving our lives. But if you notice in the definition here that for New Age, it, it's not just about seeking spiritual things apart from the revealed will of God in the Bible, but they're bucking against the technological world, the advances that have led us to the secularized ideas that, you know, we're naturalists. If we can't measure it, we don't worry about it. You know, you can't measure a spirit, right? So if we can't measure it, we don't worry about it. Do we even have a soul? Well, I can't detect it, so I don't worry about it. I'm just here to make money, to make myself happy in this life. Feelings, emotions, dreams, that's all just chemicals in the brain. It's not actually something that's that's uh, of a spiritual content, right? And that, that very hardened secular attitude is is evil toward God because it pushes God out of the equation, right? And those people who attend church, Christian church, right, or any kind of religious institution, those people are there because they think, you know, these religions, promote, and Christianity included, promote good values for good neighbors in society. They make us better people because we're taught not to lie, not to kill, not to steal, right? And so that's the extent of it, though. It's not, they don't want to honor God. They just want to do things that make society better in their eyes. Well, bucking against that is this group over here, the New Agers, who say, no, 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 there's more than that. Now, they're right. There's spiritual realities out there beyond what we can see and measure. And, and somehow they either pick up on that. They've had experiences with these things, you know, like perhaps demonic things. I, I don't know, right? But um, they, they pick up on the fact that there's more out there, right? And the problem is, is that they're walking into an arena that they don't understand and they cannot control. And the more they go away from God, the closer they get to things and realities that they're not going to want to be a part of. Because the angels of God in the Bible serve God by helping people come to salvation. I'm not saying they're the preachers or anything like that, but you know, they've when, when Jesus was was you know being tempted after his temptation when he he beats the devil, right? Um, three temptations, and then he he refutes the devil three times and, and rejects his temptations. Angels came and attended to him, right? So good angels are following God. Bad angels are rogue in the Bible. And so these, these demons are out there and where Paul calls them, you know, Paul calls Satan the prince of the power of the air. And there's these principalities, these powers, these unseen forces that are very present in our world. It's overlaid on top of the physical world, according to the Bible. And it's important to know that the closer you get to these things, the more you're giving yourself over to them. The more that, you know, you think you can get what you want by manipulating, you know, through idolatry and, and, and horoscopes and, and all the new age techniques described here. And, and, and some people are going to this Elvis thing thinking, maybe it's possible. Maybe Elvis will hear, hear my prayers. Maybe he can forgive my sins and, and maybe my life will take on a different direction once I do that, right? It didn't have to be Elvis. It could be anything. But once people go into that direction, you don't really know how far you're going to go what you're going to get once you're there, or if you can even come back at that point. That's why the occult is a, is a very dangerous thing, because you're giving your mind over to something that does not have your best interest at heart, and it wants to keep you away from God. They want to keep you away from God. So um, my encouragement to any of us would be, you know, take the occult seriously, not because it has this power over the Christian, but because, you know, it's, it's something not to be trifled with. You know, we, we trust Jesus and the spirit of God empowers us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In John, first John four, right there, he means he that is deceiving, the deceiving voice in the world, right? We have a settled place with God where God keeps us and God is with us, and God reveals to us things that are not right, right? We, we get a, a sensation at times that, that that's true. Primarily, though, it's not a sensation or an unctioning like that. Rather, it's going to be the Word of God, the Bible itself. And so we need to know what the Bible says 
as the primary point, right? Um, there was a man I met one time. I bring up the sensation because uh, he was a he was a Jamaican Rasta, which is not uncommon in in Fort Lauderdale where I used to live. And this is in the beginning of my days in, in Christianity. I didn't understand a lot, and um, you know I knew Jesus was God. I knew the blood of Jesus on the cross was the only way to be saved. And so when I, you know, as I was sitting on this uh, rail in front of Winn-Dixie, where I used to work about 11 o'clock at night, um, it's kind of a grungy area. I'm waiting for a cab to pick me up back when you used to take cabs before Uber and all that. And um, a, I sat next to this guy. He, he was a Rasta. And we started talking. I asked, I was trying to evangelize. I said, do you believe in Jesus? He's like, yeah, I believe in Jesus, you know, this and that. And he was happy. He was encouraged about that. And I was like, good, you know. And then he says to me, did you know that Jesus never died on the cross? He only bled as a sign of grace, right? And immediately, as soon as he said that, I felt this whole side of my body was like tingling, like super hard. Like it was, it was a weird sensation. It was physical at that point. And it was just like, you know, this guy's not good. So at least what he's he, dealing with is not good. He's got these wrong ideas about God. And I don't, I wasn't about to believe in what he was saying, but something that he's dealing with spiritually was like, he's got the wrong ideas and something is helping him continue in that belief. And it's not good, you know, demonic. Right. And so, you know, I continued to talk to him and he was still in that vein, but he wasn't about to listen to what I was saying. Then my cab came and I said, look, I got to go. I'll catch you later. So I, we do like this, right? And then as you pull away, you kind of do this. And he, he pulls and he says, you got to draw strength out of the other person's spirit. And as soon as he said that, I let go. Because I was thinking to myself, whatever you got, I don't want any of that, right? I'm just going to stick with Jesus and not worry about that. Um, so th there are things out there. And, and there are people influenced by these things. And I just want to encourage us to stick to the Bible. Stick to what the Bible says. And there are those times when we're going to be around people and there's going to be demonic presences. Maybe people that are, you know, enravished by these things and just kind of raptured by them. And maybe the Spirit will give us something that we need to kind of be aware of. You know, that's that was the case for me. And it's happened more than one time. But um, I just want to encourage you with that, that, you know, there are weird things out there, weird beliefs, weird churches, and um, I'm hoping to do a few more videos on different churches like this. And I'm looking for the weird stuff. I'm not looking for the common stuff. So when I look at these churches, it's going to be about things that, that really are, you know, tongue in cheek, like, what is that? Where does that come from? And what's the force behind that? So be encouraged as a Christian, trust in Jesus, and he's going to get you and me through to the very end.